Engineering Thermal 1, Chapter 5, Lecture 2, Mass Energy and Analysis of Control Volumes. So in this lecture, we'll look at, at turbines and other uh, simple engineering devices. So first, let's take a look at turbines. In steam or gas or hydroelectric power plants, the device that drives the electric generator is known as the turbine. The turbine is the one that takes the mechanical energy of the steam and converts it into a rotational motion that you can use to drive an electric generator. As the fluid passes through the turbine, work is done against the blades, which are attached to the shaft. As a result, the shaft rotates and the turbine produces work. So this picture to the, uh, here is shown as a picture of an inside of a turbine. These, these are individual turbine blades. So this is a very huge turbine. Uh, so here you would have steam flowing down on top of this, this turbine, turning these blades. And as the steam turns the blades, it gives up its energy to the blades and causes a rotational motion. That steam then conde uh, condenses and falls downward and falls down into the condenser. So here's another picture of a turbine. This shows the, the uh, guys working on a turbine. This shows the individual turbine blades. You can see there's multiple parts of a turbine. There's a, there's a high pressure part and there's a low pressure part. Uh, but they're elab very elaborate, uh, well-constructed devices. And so this shows the shaft uh, running all the way through here. On the other end, of course, would be like a generator. That, so this thing would turn and turn the shaft, and at the other end would turn a generator through a magnetic field and, and make electricity. Compressors and pumps. So compression and pumps are, are sort of related, the difference being that a uh, compressor is uh, used to compress a gas and pumps uh, handle liquids instead of gases. But basically, these are devices used to increase the pressure of a fluid, whether it be a gas in the case of a compressor or a liquid in the case of a pump. And this here example shows a picture of a, a pump. So here you can see the, the blades. And so here the, the pump is spinning as the, let's say this is water coming in and then push, push, push back through. So let's take a look at, at a couple of examples. Let's look at a compressor. Air at 100 kilopascals and 280K is compressed steadily to 600 kilopascals and 400K. The mass flow to the air is 0 0.02 kilograms per second. Heat loss of 16 kilojoules per kilogram occurs during this process. Assuming changes in kinetic and potential energies are negligible, determine the necessary power input to the compressor. So here, this is a steady flow uh, device. So the energy in is equal to the energy out. Uh, so here we'll have work in. This is the work due to spin the shaft of the compressor. Plus M dot H1. This is uh, H1 of the, the uh, enthalpy of the air coming in into the compressor. Equals Q dot out. This is the heat loss out. Plus M dot times H2, which is the enthalpy coming out. So he tells us the pressure and temperature coming in and coming out. And he tells us the uh, Q out. So, you know, since he gave this to us in uh, the Q out in, in uh, kilojoules per kilogram, we can, we can divide uh, this equation here I've highlighted uh, by the mass and write this as, uh, uh, you know, in terms of per unit mass. Uh, but first, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll actually uh, solve this for, for the work in, since that's what uh, one thing we need to find here. So the work in is equal, take this, this second term, shift it over to the right. And so you'll get the work in dot equals mq out, m dot q out plus m dot times the change in enthalpy. So here we need to find the, the enthalpies for, uh, we can look in table A17, and I've, I've sort of highlighted it here. Again, this is air. Uh, so 280K, we can look up what the enthalpy is, is 280.13, and at 400 Kelvin, it's 400.98. Uh, so we can just plug our values in. We know what the, the flow rate is, uh, so we can calculate W dot N is 2.74 kilowatts. Example at 5.7, power generation by a steam turbine. Here it shows us a steam, a turbine. We have uh, steam coming in at 2 million pascals, 400 degrees Celsius. Uh, the velocity is 50 meters per second, and the height is 10 meters measured from some reference value. He also tells us that the uh, power output is 5 me megawatts. 
Uh, so as the team, steam comes in again, remember it spins the shaft. And so the amount of work, uh, amount of power generated by that is 5 million watts. The pressure comes out at uh, 15 kilopascals, uh, a quality of 0.9. The velocity is 180 meters per second, and the, the uh, height is 6 meters. So all these, these Z values are measured from some reference value. And what we're going to find when we solve this problem is that uh, the potential energy and kinetic energy is very relevant compared to the the enthalpy, but he has us calculate that just to uh, show us, uh, uh, you know, that they are irrelevant. So here we'll compare the magnitudes of the change in enthalpy, the change in kinetic energy, the change in potential energies in part A here. <clears throat> so at the inlet, the steam is superheated vapor. How do you know that? Well, you know, based on what we, we've learned, uh, we can go to the, the steam tables. Uh, uh, A4, A5, we can look up the values and we'll find that, that hey, we're, we need to be in the superheated tables. So we go to table A6, we can find what H1 is. Again, I encourage you to do that. At the turbine exit, we're told what the quality is. So here we know it's a, it's a saturated liquid vapor mixture. So we can find H2. We can look up the value for HF and HFG. Uh, we can calculate this, this value. So we now we know what H1 and H2 are. We can find delta H. It's minus 887.39 kilojoules per kilogram. And again, this is how much energy is given up to the, the uh, uh, turning the shaft. You can calculate the change in kinetic energy and change in potential energy cause, because he gave us the velocities and he gave us the change in heights. And you'll find that, uh, you know, they're much, much smaller than, so this is orders of eight, you know, almost 900 kilojoules per kilogram. This, this is roughly 15, this is 0.04, so these two terms are negligible. That's why we, often we can ignore the change in kinetic and change in potential energy for turbines because this is so much bigger. It's really not going to matter. So for the energy balance, energy in equals energy out, so we can write this, direct, this equation directly as we talked about. Uh, we know what these values are, so we can kind of calculate it. Uh, the, the work out is, uh, we can, sh you know, if you divide through by the M dots, what the book does is, is the solution and, and solve this for, for uh, the work out. Uh, since we already calculated these values, that's one reason he does this, we already calculated what these values are. He goes ahead and plug these in, but, but honestly, you can just ignore those. And uh, you get 872.48 kilojoules per kilogram. Um, so what's the mass flow rate? It's... Uh, w dot out over over the workout, uh, 5.73 kilojoules per second. And, and again, oftentimes students uh, confuse the fact they they don't they confuse what W dot and and, and W are. Remember, W dot is a power. Uh, the power is equal to the mass flow rate times the work. Uh, but students kind of kind of forget that you know you know what I mean. That so they have to kind of be careful careful with that. And as he makes the observation, he says that, again that that uh, the change in potential energy uh, and kinetic energy is insignificant. This is typical for most engineering devices. So a couple more devices, uh, you know, there's what's called the throttling valves. Uh, a throttling valve is simply a valve that's going to uh, 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 kind of like as, as a, like the restrictor, a uh, Flow restricting devices is, is most likely uh, the kind we'll work with. Uh, the pressure drop here is often accompanied by by a uh, large drop in temperature in these kind of throttling devices. These are often used for uh, uh, refrigeration and air conditioning applications, as we'll see uh, later on down the road. So here, you know, uh, there's not there's not any moving parts. Uh, the throttling valve is simply a little device like an orifice. Uh, so it's, it's, you're simply dealing with the chain, uh, energy balance. So H, H2 is equal to H1 across here. Uh, so U1 plus P1 V1 equals U2 plus P2 V2. So you can sort of look these values up and solve, and solve for these, these values because the enthalpy is constant across this, this thing. Uh, so even though the enthalpy is constant, you can, you can uh, convert uh, internal energy to uh, 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 you know, the, the, the internal energy is not constant. U1 and U2 are, are, don't have to be equal. 
Uh, so, but the relationship uh, uh, left hand side has to equal the right hand side. So, if this if this term decreases, then these terms got to increase to to keep it constant. So let's look at uh, application of this as example 5.8. Uh, refrigerant R134 equals a capillary tube of a refrigerator as a saturated liquid at 0.8 million pascals and is throttled to a pressure of 0.12 million pascals. Determine the quality of the refrigerant at the final state and the temperature drop during this process. So at the inlet, we're told that it's a saturated liquid. Uh, so P1 is 0.8 million pascals, if it's a saturated liquid, then we can look up what the, temp the saturation temperature is. From table A12, we can find HF at that value. At the exit, we're told that it's throttled to 0.12 million pascals. Now, we ha this is a given. We have to know this in a, throttling, in a throttling kind of situation. H1 is H2 equal. So what's H2 going to equal? It's going to equal this value here, 95.48. So here we can look this we can look this value up. What we find is we can have to look up the HF value and the HG value. Uh, we can find that the saturation temperature is minus 22.38, uh, 22 minus 22.32 degrees C. Um, so these all come from from table the tables. So obviously here. H2 falls between HF and HG, so the refrigerant exits as a saturated liquid vapor mixture, and so we can calculate the quality uh, using our standard formula and find this 0 0.340. Uh, since it's a saturated mixture, uh, we can calculate the temperature difference. It's minus 53.63 degrees C. Another kind of device you see oftentimes is what's known as a mixing chamber. Uh, this is a section of pipe where two flows meet together and, and combine, and uh, uh, so you have a flow of hot water in, hot water, cold water in, into a, a tea elbow, like in a shower. Uh, this is often known as what's known as a, a mixing chamber. This is an example of it. The energy balance is, is pretty simple. You have you have uh, two two uh, flows coming in and one flow going out. So the energy coming in has to equal the energy going out. Uh, so it's a very simple kind of equation uh, that we apply. Another example that's very similar is what's known as a heat exchanger. These are devices where you have two moving fluid streams exchanging heat without mixing. So here you have, uh, so fluid A comes through a pipe and fluid B flow, uh, a fluid B flows around the pipe. This is, is, is like a radiator uh, in your car or, you know, like in the back of your refrigerator, same, same kind of thing. Um, so here, the, the big thing is you have to, you have to uh, conserve energy. Uh, so in a very simple example here, you know, where fluid A comes in at 20 degrees C, uh, fluid B comes in at 70 degrees C, and obviously Fluid B is going to give up its energy to fluid A, so fluid A is going to come out at a hotter temperature, and fluid B is going to come out at a little cooler temperature. So you have to conserve energy here. So, so uh, you know, so even if you have a case where you have uh, multiple inlets, you know, you have an inlet inlet here uh, for the fluid coming in, and if this fluid flows out here. Uh, the fluid flowing through the pipe comes in at three and goes out four. So you still have to conserve energy. So M1 dot H1 plus M3 dot H3, the energy coming in, this one plus that one, has to equal the energy going out, this one plus that one. Uh, so it's very easy to solve this. You know, if you know what the temperatures are coming in here uh, and going out, it's very easy to solve uh, this kind of equation. Another type you can deal with this, and, and you have uh, the, when you transport liquids and gases in pipes and, and ducts, uh, this usually satisfies the steady flow conditions. You know, where you have like hot air coming through here, uh, you know, in, like in your home when you have a uh, heat, heat and air system, you're going to lose some uh, through the, the duct work, because some of that's going to be lost, but you know, you're going to have a, a certain flow coming in here. Uh, 
you know, and usually, you know, you have to keep, again, it's just a straight kind of energy balance. And if it's air uh, that's coming in and coming out, we can use the uh, uh, specific heat values and the temperature values to calculate that. You know, so the m uh, m dot h2 minus m dot h1, we're going to write that as the using uh, our, uh, this since the ga air is a gas, we're going to write it using m dot uh, times the constant pressure specific heat times the change in temperature difference.